Hey everyone, today I want to discuss a very common photography argument. I bring this up because it's discussed so frequently within our community and in general, it's unhelpful to our development as a photographer. That argument is, does gear matter? This has to be the most discussed topic in photography. You can catch a post on this topic every couple months from nearly every photography blog, usually flip-flopping between sides. You can catch people going back and forth over this on Facebook and you can catch every YouTuber taking a stance on this topic me included now. Now this argument is pretty straightforward. On one side, you have people who say that the camera, lenses, and lighting that a photographer uses does not matter. That great images can be captured with anything. On the other side, you have people who say that their gear is directly tied to their success, that they couldn't do what they do without it. Well, before I pick this apart, I just want to say this is really fresh in my head from a project I recently did with Vanessa Joy for her budget photography shootout series. So, Go check out that video on her channel if you want to see how I personally handle shooting portraits without my normal lighting camera and lenses. Also, thanks to Autorama who sponsors the series, I'll be giving away the A6100 that I actually used in that video at the end of this video, so stay tuned for those details. All right, first let's look at the argument that gear doesn't matter. There's a lot of merit to this perspective. Let's quickly total up everything that's involved with creating an image, say a portrait. We have a subject in the photo who has had a certain amount of styling involved, whether that be clothing, accessories, hair, or makeup. They are posed in a certain way, looking a certain direction. There is an element of communication between the photographer and the subject to encourage a specific expression. The subject is in a location which may have been chosen or built from the ground up. The photographer has infinite options for lighting, anywhere from using the available light to individually choosing the characteristics of one or multiple lights. Each light can be considered in terms of quality, intensity, direction, and color. Check out this playlist if this sounds foreign to you. Only after all of that do we grab our camera and the lens that we think is most suitable. And then there's more decisions. The composition, the angle, the focal length, the focusing mode, the shutter speed, aperture, ISO, Kelvin temp. <sighs> now I see why people stay in auto mode. We marry all of that with precise timing and then we have one image. We repeat this process until we are satisfied. We follow that up with selecting the best versions of our images, and then the editing process begins where we balance, color, sharpen, dodge, burn, crop, composite, all of our selected photos. Out of that entire process, the camera and the lens were barely mentioned. Surely gear can't really matter when it's such a tiny portion of the decision making made during the capture of a photo. But could you take a great photo without a camera? The opposing argument that gear does matter is equally strong. There are undoubtedly limitations of low quality equipment and these limitations can have varying impacts on the quality of your photos and success as a photographer. Let's use some cherry picked examples to illustrate this point. You have a Rebel T3i and an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. Can you photograph great action photos of a football game? No. The focal length is just not suitable to the sport. Even if you got great light, unless you're refereeing the game, you're not going to be able to get close enough to that action. You're a natural light wedding photographer who is genuinely offended by the idea of using flash. You have a D700 in zoom lenses. Will your photos inside a dark reception venue be as good as your bright and airy outdoor shots? No, there exists plenty of indoor areas that would render such a kit useless. Can you create soft light in one image of a family photo of 12 people if all you have to modify your flash is a mag sphere? No, I could create dozens of these examples, but the point is always the same. There are scenarios that will expose inadequacies of gear, restricting the photographer from creating their best image quality. When you think about both sides of the argument, it's easy to see that there will never be a consensus to this discussion. So what does this actually mean for the journey of a photographer? First, you should take comfort knowing that there are so many ways to improve your photography that do not require the expense of more photography equipment. There is always room to improve your decision making when it comes to camera settings, communication, styling, composition, lighting, and editing. Especially in this day and age where there are so many resources to learn about these topics for free. But there will always be a voice in your head that says, if I just had this product, my images would be better. And for that, I do have some suggestions. First, don't get caught up in the idea that because someone else created an image with a specific piece of gear, that if you have that gear, you'll be able to create the same quality. It's a fallacy that ignores 95% of the vision and decision making that goes into creating an image. Second, if you're pursuing photography as a career, ensure your investments make financial sense. This means being able to identify how a piece of gear will lead to a return on your investment prior to you actually hitting the buy button. And this could be something like, Getting this f1.4 lens will give me the confidence I need to shoot low light wedding ceremonies, which I'm 
otherwise not taking, or I'm losing out on editorial jobs because my camera doesn't have the resolution to meet clients' printing requirements, but otherwise they'd love to work with me. Now, if that sounds rosy, I will admit it's not usually that clear and that it's much more likely that you will physically feel the burden of a gear limitation. Like when you're taking a shot and you say to yourself, I wish I could get closer, but you physically can't, well, that's a sign that you need a longer lens. Or if you're reviewing your images and see that you can't maintain focus on a moving subject, well, if you've already learned great technique for tracking a subject and still come away with bad shots, it might be a sign that your gear is a limiting factor. But in those situations, it's best to ask someone who is doing that exact same type of work as you and asking them if they think that your gear is a problem and make sure it's somebody that you respect their opinion. So overall, my input on whether or not gear matters is, it depends. Yes, great photos can be taken with low quality gear. Yes, vision and skill impact a photo way more than the equipment used. And yes, low quality gear can prevent a person from getting great photos. We need to respect that there will never be a world where we all see eye to eye on this topic. Every photographer has had a different set of experiences that has led to their beliefs about how much gear impacts their own photos. So there's no point in trying to find out who's right. We all instead take the time to focus that energy on how we can truly improve our own photos. We'll all be better photographers. Now about that A6100 giveaway. In the spirit of becoming better photographers, I want to hear your stories of how you use creativity to overcome a gear limitation. So on Instagram, post a photo and include in the description how you felt limited and how you broke through to create an image that you're proud of. Tag me in the photo so I'll see it and I'll pick one favorite and send you this A6100, not the lens, just the camera. And lastly, this giveaway would not be possible without Autorama and Vanessa Joy's series, so make sure to give them a follow as well. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, subscribe and turn on notifications if you'd like to see more of my videos. And until next time, take it easy.